This video will demonstrate how to apply a Thomas splint, which should be applied on femur shaft and distal femur fractures, not for neck or femur fractures. Here we have a Thomas splint covered with a stocking net to support the leg. Alternate measures can be used if unavailable, such as a bandage or a pillowcase. We also have a skin traction device. Two elastic bandages to wrap around the skin traction device and then something to elevate the leg once the application process is complete. Here we've used creme wire splint but you can use a pillow. With the help of an assistant you need to apply the skin traction device making sure that the double padded region covers the malleoli. Leave 10 centimeters below the heel to allow for adequate skin traction. Start by applying the bandage above the malleoli. The techniques demonstrated here is the 50% overlap method. Alternatively, you can use the figure of eight method, which ensures more tensile strength. And you want to apply all the way up to the level of the groin, making sure that's not too tight to prevent the development of compartment syndrome. This is the orientation in which this should be inserted with the ischial tuberosity sitting on the rim. You should not insert it in this way because it becomes ineffective and predisposes to pressure sores in the groin. With your assistant keeping skin traction, work together to insert the Thomas splint up to the level of the groin. The foot lies in external rotation in femur fractures and we want to reduce it in internal rotation. We can achieve this by putting the inner string under and the outer string over and then tying a reef knot to secure it. And your assistant can help you to secure this knot. At this point, your traction should look like this. Next, you want to create a pulley system that allows you to either increase or decrease traction according to what's best for your patient. And you can secure the pulley in any regular knot. A common mistake is to tie a knot first before threading your strings over and under. This is not secure as you can see. The last step is to elevate the patient's leg using crema wire splint or a pillow to prevent the formation of pressure sores. And at the end you want to make sure that the heel is free. This is a completed Thomas splint. Remember to regularly check your patient's neurovascular status to prevent the formation of compartment syndrome. Remember that a Thomas splint is temporary and surgery is the ultimate treatment.